If you've struggled with growing corn in the past, I've got some handy suggestions that are sure to help. Hi, I'm Ben Van Heems, and today I'm determined to help you get the crop of your dreams. And it all starts with how you sow. Poor germination often occurs in cooler conditions, so it's a good idea to start seeds off inside if warmer weather typically arrives later where you are. A temperature of 65 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 to 21 Celsius gives the speediest results, as this leaves less time for seeds to languish and potentially rot. Germinating indoors also reduces the risk of mice or other rodents discovering the seeds and eating them. There's no hurry to sow either. Mid to late spring is just fine because you don't want to be in a situation where you've got plants desperate to be planted outside when there's still a very real threat of frost. These guys are now ready to plant. Let's take a look. Ah yes, there you go. It's got a really healthy root system. They're still quite small however, and while there's nothing wrong with that, once they're planted, birds might still be able to lift them out to get at the seeds underneath. To prevent this, and to help them make the transition to fresher air, I'm going to keep them covered with this row cover until they've rooted out and anchored themselves into their new home in about two weeks time. Slow or lacklustre growth may be caused by a number of things, including poor light levels, not enough moisture or a lack of nutrients. All types of corn need plenty of direct sunshine. Look at this block here. You can clearly see how the plants towards the right are stunted because they sit in the shade for much of the day. These tall plants are hungry plants, so it's important to enrich beds with lots of organic matter such as garden compost, then follow this up at planting time with a scattering of a balanced general purpose organic fertilizer. Don't plant them too close together or you run the risk of disappointing these small cobs. I can get away with around a foot, that's 30 centimetres, between plants in my wetter climate, but if you're growing in a drier climate, you might want to go to around 15, 16 inches, that's 40 centimetres apart, so that individual plants have more resources to draw on. If it is dry, water really thoroughly aiming at the base of the plants to avoid any problems with disease. Consistent moisture is essential to ensuring those big, fat cobs that we're after, so it's hard to overemphasize the importance of this. While wind is a good thing for this wind-pollinated crop, strong gusts can occasionally topple plants over. Soft, fleshy growth makes plants more susceptible to falling over, something made more likely when there's too much nitrogen so avoid using fertilisers with a very high nitrogen content. It's not uncommon to see roots poking through at the surface close to the stems. If this happens, mound soil up over the roots to keep them covered, or just cover the whole area with a mulch of compost, which will help with growth anyhow. If you do notice plants getting rocked about in the wind, consider tying them to stakes. Planting in blocks helps plants support each other to some extent, and it has other benefits too. Look at these cobs. It's tempting to think that a pest has eaten the kernels, but actually they never developed at all. Incomplete or inconsistent kernel development, with the cobs only partly or sporadically filled, is down to poor pollination. The silks protruding from the ends of each cob are responsible for carrying the pollen down to the kernels. One strand connects to one kernel, so for complete fill, every strand of the silk must be pollinated. Getting this right begins at planting time. Because corn is wind pollinated, it's important to plant it in a block rather than just a single or double row. Planting in a block like this increases the chances of the pollen that's released at the tassels at the top of the plant drifting down onto the female silks lower down. If you're only growing a few plants, try hand pollinating instead. Wait until the anthers are dangling down from the tassels at the top, then cut one of the tassel sections off, then brush it back and forth across the silks below. Be thorough so that every strand gets some pollen. You can also tap the stalks on still days to help dislodge the pollen. 
American and Canadian gardeners will be all too familiar with the damage inflicted by corn earworms to the kernels. Corn earworms are the caterpillars of a night-flying moth which lays its eggs on the silks. Once they hatch, the caterpillars make a beeline for the ears. One way to beat them is to drop roughly a quarter of a teaspoon of oil onto the point where the silks enter the ears about a week after the silks first emerge. You could also try planting varieties with tight husks that make it hard for the caterpillars to gain entry, or simply grow an early variety, which stands a good chance of maturing before earworms reach their peak towards the end of the summer. Another pest that can bore into the ears, but more often the stalks, is the appropriately named corn borer. Exposed caterpillars can be controlled with BT, a spray made with a naturally occurring bacteria, but aim to prevent infections in the first place by keeping your corn patch free of weeds. Both these pests overwinter as pupae, so take extra care at the end of the season to remove old plants to your compost heap. And if they have been a problem, dig the area over to expose any that might be lurking below ground and plant in a different area next year. Now, have you ever had the experience of tucking into what looks like a juicy sweet corn cob only to have it taste bland? This is the number one reason why paying a little more for your seeds really pays off. Hybrid or F1 varieties are bred for flavour and taste yielding superior cobs, especially if you choose one of the super sweet varieties. Varieties bred for sweetness will also hold on to their taste for longer, though of course the closer you can pick your cobs to cooking them, the better. Another reason behind bland or starchy sweet corn cobs is picking them late. Pick the ears as soon as the silks have turned brown, no later. If in doubt, check they're ready by sinking a fingernail into one of the kernels like this. A milky liquid should exude. If it doesn't, you've left it too late, as most of those prized sugars will have turned to starch. Master these common problems and corn is a wonderfully easy crop to grow. Please share your tips for growing the best corn down below. And if you found this video useful, please consider hitting that subscribe button because it really helps us out. Thanks for watching and for more advice on growing sweet corn, please check out this sowing to harvest video. I'll catch you next time.